Hey everybody and welcome to Flight Test. I'm John. Today we're building a Spitfire. I've been talking with the guys over at Flight Test and a number of times they've brought up that a bunch of you have been blowing up the Flight Test inbox over the last couple years requesting a version 2 Spitfire. Well I'm excited to announce your cries have been heard. The Flight Test Spitfire is the next release in the Flight Test Master Series lineup. If you have already built a Master Series airplane and you enjoyed yourself, you're going to love this build. If you've been sitting on the sidelines thinking, I really want to get in on the action, this aircraft is going to be a great one to start out with. Over the next few hours, we're going to be going over this build in great detail. These builds are not particularly difficult, they just require time and attention. Before we get started, I want to talk about a couple options with the Spitfire. As with all flight test aircraft, this will be available as a speed build kit or as a free download. Flight test speed build kits include everything you need to build the airframe minus the electronics. Each speed build kit comes with precision laser cut, water resistant foam, and wood. All these pieces are necessary to complete the aircraft. Also included with the speed build kit are going to be control rods and other miscellaneous parts necessary to complete the build. The only thing you have to supply are the electronics. The Flight Test Master Series Spitfire is also available as a free download. If you're going to do a free download, I want to recommend Adam's Ready Board. Adam's Ready Board is available at craft stores, hobby stores, and dollar stores. There are a lot of foams out there. Whenever possible, I definitely recommend the Adam's Ready Board. There's a few things about Adam's Ready Board that makes it especially suited for making aircraft like this. It's lightweight and it's very strong. One thing that sets it apart from all the others is it's pliable. And you'll see in this video, we're going to be peeling one layer of paper off the foam and we're going to be able to take and form complex shapes using the foam. It's really difficult to get those kind of results with other types of foam. Speaking of foam board, there's a couple of exciting products coming out in the very near future. First of all, Maker's Foam. It is just like Flight Test Foam Board with its water resistant characteristics, but instead of it being a craft paper color, it's white. This is going to be great if you like painting aircraft. One more product I'm really excited about is Monster Foam. Monster Foam is almost twice as thick as classic foam. Now with the added thickness, you also get added strength, which means that you can take a plane like this or one of the classic flight test aircraft, you can take the plans, blow them up by approximately 185% and suddenly you've got this monster that you can fly. And if you've ever seen a monster plane fly through the air, it is something else. It is so much fun. I am so excited about this product. That's enough for me. What do you say we get to building? Go and remove the following pieces from your kit. I've got two upper wing skins, two lower wing skins, there are four foam spars. Two of them are long and two of them are short. And I've got two wooden spars. We're going to start with the lower wing skin, so go ahead and set the other parts off to the side. I'm going to start with the test fit. And I'm just going to butt these two edges up together. And make sure I'm lined up on the edges. That looks good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of my foam spars and I'm going to put it under one edge. When I glue these two edges together, I want to make sure that any glue that comes out the bottom doesn't stick to the tabletop. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to one edge. And I'm going to stick the two halves together. Let this cool down a full minute and a half. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and pull this spar out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and pop out these small rectangular knockouts. There's uh, four of them in the middle, and there's two of them on this wing tip, and then two of them on the other wing tip. I'm going to use the blunt end of a barbecue skewer. Once you're done, go ahead and grab your four foam spars. 
Go ahead and lay your four foam spars out. You'll notice that I've got the scores facing upward. I've got this razor blade here that I've taken and rubbed on concrete. I then put a piece of blue tape on there. That lets me know that this is a dull one. Whenever I run the razor blade down the scores, I don't want to cut all the way through. Go ahead and run your dulled razor blade down each score on all four of the foam spars. Once you go down each score, go ahead and break the spar open like this and carefully remove this center section. You'll notice that I'm twisting sideways rather than pulling straight up. Now go ahead and repeat the process on the remaining three. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and glue each one together. When gluing these together, we're going to run a bead of glue down the channel and down one side or the other on the spar itself. I always like to begin my glue about a quarter inch from the edge and end about a quarter inch from the other edge. That way, whenever we fold everything together, we don't have glue squirting out the ends. Before we apply glue, I do want to go ahead and do a quick test fold. And what we're doing is we're forming a C fold. And a C fold is easy to remember because if you look at the paper, it kind of forms a letter C. I'm happy with the test fit, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and apply glue. I'm going to go ahead and keep pressure on the part for about a minute and a half while the glue cools down. Now let's do the same thing on the remaining three. Once these have cooled down, go ahead and grab your lower wing skin and we'll get these foam spars installed. Go ahead and lay your spars on the lower wing skin as I've done here. The leading edge of the wing is going to have this big U-shaped cutout. The short spar goes in the front and of course the longer spar goes in the back. You'll notice that my tabs are all facing downward and all tabs are facing the trailing edge of the wing. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. Okay, that looks good. What we're going to do is put glue in both of the cavities and then apply a heavy bead of glue all the way along the bottom of the spar. Let that cool down for a full minute, and then we'll do the back one. Let's go ahead and start with the test fit. And if that looks good, pull it out and go ahead and apply glue like we did on the other one. Let that cool down for a full minute, and then we will do the same thing on the other side. Let's start with a test fit of the wooden spars. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center point, which is right where it comes to a point, and I'm going to line that up with the seam between the two lower wing skins. Make sure the wooden formers are on the trailing edge side of the foam spars. We're going to just glue one side at a time, so you'll notice that this side is laying flush and this side is pointing up. We're going to go ahead and get this one side glued in, and then we'll do the other.
Let that cool for a full minute and a half, and then we're going to do the front one. Now we're going to go ahead and install the front spar. You're just going to have to eyeball this one since there's no seam going across this gap here. Now let's go ahead and glue it in place. Just like on the other, let that cool down for a full minute. Before moving on to the other side, we're going to run a bead of glue along each wooden spar. Now go ahead and flip your wing around. If we're going to push the wood spars flat to the table, I'm going to get a roll of tape and prop it under the wing here. To ensure that the wing stays perfectly flat, I'm going to be applying pressure to the center of the wooden spar and pressure to the outermost edge of the wooden spar. I want to make sure that my wing is lying flat on the table. All right, that looks good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply glue to both of the spars. You can see where I'm bending them backwards where I can get my glue gun in there. And pressing down on the end and pressing down in the center. I'm going to hold this for a full minute and a half while the glue cools down. Just like on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and run one line of glue here and a second line of glue right here. Now go ahead and set this assembly off to the side and we're going to go ahead and work on the upper wing skins. Go ahead and grab one of the wing skins and we're going to flip it upside down. The underside of the wing skin is going to have a score along the aileron. Go ahead and take a dulled razor blade and let's run it along the score. Once that's done, flip your wing over and go ahead and break your aileron all the way over. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a bevel all along this edge. My favorite way to cut bevels is to take a ruler and place it approximately a quarter inch from the edge. Holding a razor blade at 45 degrees and then rotating it 45 degrees in the direction I'll be cutting, I simply draw the razor blade along the ruler and that gives me a perfect bevel. Okay, that looks good. I'm now able to move my aileron up and down. Once a bevel's cut and I'm happy with the movement on the aileron, I'm going to go ahead and apply a heavy bead of glue along the seam where this bevel was cut. Now I'm going to take a piece of scrap and I'm going to remove the glue from the bevel. This is going to add a lot of strength to that hinge. You don't want to close the aileron, otherwise it'll stick in place. Go ahead and let that cool down for about a minute. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and peel paper off the underside of the wing. Now I want to leave paper along the trailing edge here and the trailing edge here. So as I'm tearing paper, I'm going to lay a ruler right across here. And you'll notice when I tear this off and I keep pressure on the ruler, there'll be a nice clean tear right along here. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and form the airfoil on the wing. We're gonna form the airfoil by flipping the wing right side up and putting it on the edge of a table. Now what we're going to do is we're going to be drawing the wing over the edge of the table and bending it down just slightly. 
Now, I want to show you the amount of pressure that I'm using. This is a good starting point. You might use a little more, you might use a little less. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply firm hand pressure. And you can see that there is a line. That's a good starting point if you're not sure how much pressure to add. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wing on the edge of the table. And as I draw downwards, I'm going to be bending my fingers very slightly to give it an airfoil shape. All right, now I'm going to move my hands over. I'll draw that a couple times, and then I'll move my hands. You can see that I'm working my way across three or four times. This should be adequate for giving you the airfoil shape we're looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the shape. I'm going to lay my wing up on the table, and you can see that it's pretty exaggerated. That's actually what we want. Whenever we're applying the upper wing skin to the lower wing skin, we want to be able to press it down and flatten it just slightly. Looks like I need a little bit of work right here. So I'm going to concentrate my efforts on this area right here all the way down to the wingtip. You can see that as I'm drawing it across the table that I'm really bending the leading edge over with my fingertips. Now I'm going to go ahead and check the shape again. This is the airfoil shape that I'm going for. Again, it's very exaggerated, but this is what I'm looking for. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to go ahead and cut a bevel all along the leading edge of this wing. This is going to minimize the leading edge thickness once the two halves are glued together. I've got my wing skin balanced on the trailing edge in the vertical position. I'm going to hold my razor blade in a vertical position also. Starting here on the end, I'm going to plunge it into the foam and I'm going to draw it from the wingtip to the center of the wing. Once I've made the cut, I'm going to go ahead and lay the wing skin on the tabletop and see if I've closed that gap in. Now I'm going to go ahead and inspect to see how the wing lays. Looks like my gap is pretty minimal right through here. Looks like it opens up quite a bit here, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit more bevel from about here to the tip of the wing. Yeah, I'll go ahead and test that again. That looks really good. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other wing. Using your dulled razor blade, go ahead and run it down the score on the aileron. Flip your wing over, hold your aileron back, and we're going to go ahead and cut a bevel. Movement looks good, so let's go ahead and apply a bead of glue right down the bevel. Make sure you've got a piece of scrap handy.
and leave that open for a full minute. And then we'll go ahead and tear the paper off the underside. Once that's done, let's go ahead and form up the airfoil. Just like before, we're going to start about two-thirds of the way from the leading edge and draw it down. Looks pretty good, but I am going to go ahead and add a little bit more shape here to the leading edge. I want it to be more like this. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add a bevel along the leading edge. Got my wing vertical, my razor blade positioned vertically, and I'm going to start at the center and work towards the wing tip this time. I think that looks good. Now go ahead and grab your lower wing assembly and we're going to go ahead and install the upper wing skins. I'm going to start with the left wing skin and I'm going to do a test fit. When I do my test fit, I'm going to line up the leading edge of the wing. And this is going to give me position forward and backwards. But in order to make sure it's in the correct position left and right, I'm going to line up a very small crop mark right here at the center to the very edge of the cutout on the lower wing skin. Okay, and I'm going to apply light pressure to the top of the wing and I'm going to look down the leading edge and see if I've got any gaps. Okay, it looks good all along here, but if you notice I've got a pretty big gap right here at the wing tip. So I'm going to pull this wing skin off and we're going to go ahead and form this area a little bit more. I'm going to take and draw this over the edge of the table. I'm going to be applying quite a bit of pressure with my fingers to really give the leading edge the added shape we need. I'll go ahead and test fit this again. I'm starting with lining up the leading edge and then lining up the crop mark on the upper wing skin to the knockout on the lower wing skin. Now when I apply pressure you can see that that gap here at the wing tip is almost closed. We can work with that. Once I'm happy with the test fit I'm going to go ahead and apply glue all along the leading edge. And then I'm also going to apply glue all along the tops of these spars. If you don't have a full glue stick in your gun, have one on standby. If you're a little sloppy on this step, it's okay. Everything will be hidden inside. I'm actually going to draw the wing skin backwards just a little bit and that'll scrape the glue towards the inside. My leading edge looks good. And I'm going to check to make sure this tick mark is lined up with the edge of that knockout. Now I'm going to apply light pressure to the top of the wing skin. Let this cool down for a full minute and a half while applying pressure. Let's go ahead and do a test fit on the other wing skin. Leading edge looks good. And I've got this crop mark lined up where it's supposed to be. And light pressure on top of the wing. And my gap looks good. All the way down to the wing tip. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. I 
again when I go to line up the leading edge I'm going to draw the upper wing skin back so it'll pull the glue towards the inside where it'll be hidden Alignment forward and backwards looks good, and left and right looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep steady pressure on this for the next minute and a half while the glue cools down. Once that's cooled down, we're going to flip the wings upside down, and we're going to apply a bead of glue all along the trailing edge. We can go ahead and do that on both sides. Keep that pinch closed for about a minute and then we'll do the wing tips. Go ahead and tear off four pieces of tape about four to five inches long. I'm going to start with laying a piece of tape with the sticky side up. The wing is in the upside down position. I'm going to lift the wing tip up and put it on the piece of tape. Go ahead and flip another piece of tape over and stick it to the upper side of the wing and then do another one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way along this edge. Once that's done I'm going to lift the wing from the center and you'll see that as I do that it's going to close that gap. Once that gap's closed, I'm going to take and wrap the tape around it. It's going to close the wing tip in nicely. I'm rolling the wing slightly backwards to make sure that's closed. And I'll just leave that tape in place for a while while the glue cools down. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and start running the electronics. For this step, you're going to need two servos, two extensions, and one Y connector. The color of the Y connector and the extensions may vary depending on the kit that you use. Go ahead and connect the servo to one of the extensions. You can see here I've got yellow, red, and brown. And over here I've got white, red, and black. I'm going to make sure that the white is connected to the yellow. Go ahead and tape the connection. For the ailerons, I'm using the Flight Test 9 gram servo. These work really, really well. Once I've got the extension connected to the servo, I'm going to go ahead and feed the wire through this knockout in the wing. Sometimes you can push this through, other times you may need to turn the wing vertical and let it drop through. Once your wire's through, go ahead and rotate your servo, and we can go ahead and put a drop of glue on either edge. I'm also going to run a bead of glue along the sides. Once that cools down, we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue the servo in. You'll notice that where the servo pivots, I've got that towards the trailing edge. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and install our Y. We'll flip our wing back over. And you'll see that I've got the wires aligned correctly. Go ahead and connect this.
and I'll go ahead and tape the connections. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and flip the wing back over and install the servo arms. Now we're going to go ahead and install the servo arms. You can see here that we're using the single arm. Go ahead and install them and you'll notice that the servo arm needs to be pointing towards the center of the aircraft. If you're using the flight test servo, they come pre-centered from the factory. Now go ahead and install the servo arm on the other side. Once the servo arms are installed, we're going to go ahead and cut the control rods. There are a number of ways that you can cut the push rod to length. I'm going to show you the way I do it. Uh, first, I'm going to run the Z bend through the outermost hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark directly above the hinge with my thumb. I'm going to grab the wire and I'm going to bend it towards the center to 90 degrees. All right. Once I do that, I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to bend the wire straight back. I'm going to look to see that the Z-bend is directly over the hinge. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. Once that's done, let's go ahead and install the control horn. Go ahead and remove two control horns from your kit. You're going to notice that these have a pill-shaped slot there at the bottom. In order to test fit the control horns, I first take the sharp end of a barbecue skewer and I run it through this slot. Once I do that, I flip the barbecue skewer over and I push the dull side in and I run it back and forth. That should make an opening large enough for the control horn to fit. I'm going to go ahead and test fit the control horn. I want to make sure that the hole is directly above the hinge. And that looks good. So now I'll go ahead and pull the control horn out, run it over my Z-bend, put a little glue inside the slot, and push the control horn in. I want to make sure that the trailing edge of the aileron is flush with the trailing edge of the wing. I'm going to let that cool down for about a minute and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Just like what we did on the other side, I'm going to run the Z-bin through the outermost hole on the servo arm. And I'm going to swing the wire back over this notch and mark right above the hinge. Grab the wire with my needle nose pliers and bend it 90 degrees. I'm going to switch hands and now I'm going to take the wire and bend it straight back. Okay, I'm going to ensure that the Z bend is directly above the hinge. That looks good. So now I'll go ahead and cut off the excess. Okay, using the sharp end of my barbecue skewer, I'm going to go ahead and open up this slot, flip it around, all right, now we'll do a test fit, okay. checking to make sure I don't have any interference. Looking to make sure that this hole is directly above the hinge. Okay, that looks good. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull the control horn out, slide it over the Z-bend, apply a bit of glue, push the control horn in, and then I'm going to make sure that the trailing edge of the aileron is flush with the trailing edge of the wing. You might have to slide your control horn back or forth just a little. Once you're happy with the position, go ahead and let things cool down for about a minute and we'll go on to the next step. Go ahead and remove the following two parts from your kit. This is the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. Lay them on the tabletop where you've got a visible score here and another visible score here and you've got a visible score here and here. Now let's go ahead and using a dulled razor blade, go ahead and run down each of these scores. We'll work on the vertical stabilizer first, so let's just set the horizontal stabilizer off to the side. Let's start by folding the rudder all the way over. I've got my ruler laying a quarter inch from the edge of the rudder and we're going to cut a bevel all the way along the edge. Once the bevel is cut, we're going to go ahead and apply glue and then we'll wipe away the excess using a piece of scrap. Leave it in the open position for about a minute while it cools down. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and tear off this piece of foam here on the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer. You'll see we've got a flap of paper. Go ahead and lay your rudder down flat. What we're going to do is we're going to take a barbecue skewer and we're going to push it in against the leading edge. I think that looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of glue along the leading edge. I'm also going to put a second bead of glue along the edge of this flap. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and push this barbecue skewer up against the leading edge. And turn my whole assembly vertical and then fold it on over. I want to make sure that this is stuck down good. Looks like I need a little bit of glue here on the corner. I'm going to cut off this little bit of excess along the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the barbecue skewer off about a half inch from where it comes out of the paper there. Let's set this assembly off to the side and now we'll work on the horizontal stabilizer. Go ahead and grab your horizontal stabilizer and we're going to fold the elevator all the way back. You can see I've still got a score visible here. I'm going to lay my ruler right along this edge, about a quarter inch, and we're going to cut a bevel. Just like on the others, we're going to go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way down. Wipe away the excess. And be sure and leave it open while the glue cools down. For this step, you're going to need a section of push rod. What we're going to do is we're going to separate the top layer of paper from the foam. I'm going to start by shoving this push rod up underneath the paper. I'm going to push the rod in about an eighth of an inch to about three sixteenths of an inch. Once I do that, I'm going to draw the push rod straight towards me. 
And you can see that as I do that, it's separating the paper from the foam. Okay, once that's been done, we're going to take that paper and we're going to fold it straight back. You'll see that we're exposing about an eighth of an inch of foam. Now we've already gone over this score with a dull razor blade here. Now what we need to do is using a sharp razor blade, we're going to cut a small sliver of foam away. I want to be sure that I'm not cutting this paper, I'm just wanting to cut this foam. And you can see that I've got my razor blade at an angle. I don't want to go through the paper on the other side. I'm just trying to cut a small sliver all the way across. Okay, once I do that, using my razor blade, I'm going to go ahead and peel out that sliver of foam. Once that's done, I'm going to take a barbecue skewer and using the dull side, I'm going to push my barbecue skewer straight in and I'm going to draw it all the way across. Take and draw it back the other way. And we'll just pull out all that foam that's broken loose. Once that's been done, I'm going to lay my barbecue skewer even with the edge over here and I'm going to mark it over here on the other side using a pair of cutters. I'm going to cut my barbecue skewer. I want to make sure that this barbecue skewer will fit exactly in that slot. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and apply a bead of glue and then I'm going to drop my skewer in. Now using a ruler, I'm going to press the skewer flat. I'm going to leave this for about 45 seconds and then we'll apply glue to the top of the skewer. And I'm going to fold this flap of paper closed. Once that's folded over, I'm going to use a ruler force that flap close and I'm going to press down and hold for about a minute. Once that's done, go ahead and move your horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer off to the side. Let's go ahead and start assembling the formers. Go ahead and remove the following parts from your kits. You're going to need five of the formers marked F1, three of the formers marked F2, three of the formers marked F3, one F4, and two F5s. What we're going to do is we're going to start by gluing together the F1s. These are simply stacked on one another and glued together. As you glue these together, make sure they are lined up exactly. We'll do the same thing with the F2s. The F3s are done the same as well. Now let's go ahead and grab the two F5s and glue them together. Be careful that you do not get glue close to the holes. Push rod housings will be passing through these holes, so we need to keep the glue away. Once the two F5s are glued together, go ahead and grab the F4. There's a tick mark at the bottom that we're going to align and then there are the two holes and then this rectangular slot. We want to make sure all that's lined up. Go ahead and glue F4 to the two F5s. 
again, keep the glue away from the holes. Go ahead and set these parts off to the side and we'll go on to the next step. Go ahead and grab the following parts out of your kit. Here we've got the power pod. Here's the battery box. And these three parts make up the backbone of the Spitfire. Let's start with these three. The three parts are identical. We're just going to stack them on top of one another and glue them together. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut a bevel all the way down this edge. On other bevels, I've been about a quarter inch from the edge. I'm going to move this back about three-eighths of an inch. I want that bevel to go a little bit deeper. Once it starts to get skinny, you will no longer be able to follow the edge of your ruler. I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. Again, I'm going to lay my ruler about three-eighths of an inch from the edge. Over here where it's skinny, I just have to freehand it. Okay, we can set this part off to the side. Go ahead and grab your power pod. And let's run our dulled razor blade down each of the scores. We'll break this open and pull out the center. This is going to be an A-fold. An A-fold means that the sides are above this base plate. I'm going to put a small amount of glue on either side here. And I'm going to hold those two sides straight up. Let that cool for about 45 seconds, then we'll go on to the battery box. Let's go ahead and do the battery box. Go ahead and use your dull razor blade and run down each of the scores. Break them open and tear off these center pieces. All right, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and fold them up. This is going to be a B fold. On a B fold, the sides are going to be beside the base plate. I'm going to fold both sides straight up and keep straight downward pressure for about 45 seconds till the glue's had a chance to cool down. Now we'll go ahead and glue the top closed. Do a quick test. Just like on the bottom, this is a B fold. Okay. I'm going to flip this upside down and apply pressure straight down. Let this cool for a full minute and now we'll start forming up the fuselage. Go ahead and grab the following pieces from your kit. Here you've got the tail section. This section, you'll notice a couple airfoil shapes, one on the left, one on the right. You'll need that. There's a long skinny piece and you'll need these four pieces as well. Let's start with the small pieces first. You can go ahead and set these three pieces off to the side. Go ahead and begin by tearing one side of the paper off of each of these pieces. The pieces are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side you tear off.
These four pieces make up the nose of the aircraft. We're going to go ahead and add a little shape to each of them. Just like on the wings, we're going to bring this to the edge of a table and we're going to draw it down. Now you'll notice that the piece itself is slightly curved. So what I'm going to make sure of is that there is always a 90 degree angle right here. So as I draw the part down, I'm also going to be twisting it just slightly to maintain that 90 degree. Okay, that'll work. Now I'll do the same on these smaller parts. You can see on these smaller parts, I'm drawing it down with my left hand and I'm kind of feeding it with my right hand. Again, I'm watching right here to make sure that this remains 90 degrees. Make sure you've got plenty of masking tape on standby. Anytime we're assembling sections of fuselage, you're gonna need lots and lots of masking tape. Since we're going to be gluing together some small parts, I'm going to be tearing off pretty small pieces of tape. Okay, let's go ahead and start by test fitting these first two pieces together. And I want to make sure that the edges are exactly lined up. If they're off just a little bit, the model is still going to go together. It's still going to fly fine. It just won't look as good. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue about half of this. Start here at the midpoint. Put a real heavy bead of glue. The paper on this piece is going to be slightly above the paper on this piece. That way when the two halves come together, if there's any excess glue that squirts out, it squirts towards the middle where it's hidden. As that glue begins to cool down, I'm going to put a small piece of tape along that seam and I'm going to wrap it around. I'm also going to put another piece of tape right here in the middle. After that cools for about 30 seconds or so, it'll be set well enough that we can go ahead and glue the other side. I'm going to go ahead and flip the part around and I'm going to apply glue right along this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and press these two pieces together. I'm going to hold it for about 30 seconds. And as the glue begins to cool down, I'll be able to go ahead and add some tape. Once that sets up, let's go ahead and test fit the next piece. Again, I want to make sure that everything is lined up. And I've got a good fit between my thumb and my finger here, so I'll be able to apply glue again about 50% of the way. I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around the end. And put a piece of tape here in the middle and go ahead and apply glue to the rest to the edge. Go ahead and remove these two squares from your kit. They're approximately an inch and a half by an inch and a half with a slight radius on each corner. What we're going to do is we're going to glue one on either side. And we're going to leave, oh, about a quarter inch from the edge of the foam right here. Go ahead and peel your tape away. Be careful when you pull your tape away that you don't take the paper underneath. I'm 
the placement on this part isn't critical. Go ahead and let things cool down for about a minute and we'll go on to the next step. Now we'll do the same on the other side. Go ahead and let things cool down for about a minute and we'll go on to the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and glue these two parts together. First let's do a test fit. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of tape ready. Normally when we're putting sections of fuselage together, we just, we just apply glue here and we apply glue here. We just match them up edge to edge. Let's also apply a little bit of glue here. This will really help everything hold together. The paper on this piece right here is going to overlap the paper on this. Get a little glue squirt now. You can use a piece of scrap to wipe it away. Hold this for about a minute and a half. Be sure and give it plenty of time to cool down. Go ahead and put a piece of tape across it. And let's go ahead and do the other side. Just like before, we're going to do a test fit. You can see that there's just a slight bit of unevenness here and that's okay because we're going to use the paper on this side to slightly overlap the paper on this side. So when it's squeezed together, all that will be hidden and there'll be a nice clean edge. Go ahead and prepare a piece of tape. I'm going to apply glue on this edge and then we're going to Apply some glue on this flat. A slight overlap and squeeze everything together. Let that cool for a minute and a half. After about 45 seconds, you can put a piece of tape in place to help you hold it. We'll set this piece off to the side. Let's go ahead and form this piece up. Go ahead and remove paper from one side, this part is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which side you remove it from. Once the paper is removed, we're going to go ahead and roll this and form it up. You can see that I'm drawing it down with my left hand and I'm using pressure on my right hand to roll it as I draw it downward. Again, I'm really watching this as I'm drawing it down to make sure that that stays a 90 degree angle. Push the two edges together. Still seems to be a little springy, so I'm going to work it just a little bit more. Okay, I think that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple pieces of tape and then we're going to go ahead and add a bead of glue. Once tape's in place, I can set this off to the side to cool down. Go ahead and grab this next part and we're going to go ahead and remove paper. This, like the others, is a symmetrical part so it doesn't matter which side you tear off. Now as I add shape to this, most of my attention is going to be right here in the middle. The plane itself isn't perfectly round. It's it's kind of flat on the side, so most of the roundness is going to be right through here. It's probably about five inches. I'm 
I am going to add a little bit of shape from here to here, but not as much as I did in the middle. And finally, I'm going to add a little bit of shape to these points on either side. Still got quite a bit of spring, but we'll come back to this part once we begin gluing them to the formers. Go ahead and set this part off to the side. And let's grab this tail section. Now you're going to notice on the tail section that it's already been broken in half. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a bead of glue all the way down this seam. I'm not worried about this excess glue. We're going to go ahead and peel the paper off in just a minute and all that excess glue will come with it. Let it cool for a full minute and then let's go ahead and tear the paper off. Now we're going to go ahead and form up the tail section. Every aircraft has one part that's a little bit harder than all the others. This is the piece that you want to take your time on. Before we begin forming up the tail section, I wanted to show you the finished product so you can see what we're trying to accomplish as we're forming up this piece. You'll notice right along the spine here, it comes to a peak, and you can see that peak there on the former. So we're going to be spending quite a bit of time just working an area that's very narrow right along this seam that you glued up just a few minutes ago. Also, you'll notice as we move down around the bottom, we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time forming this piece as well. This will be in an area about right here. You'll notice that things are pretty flat on the side, so we'll be spending a little bit of time forming this, but not near as much as the peak and then these two areas here at the bottom. Let's get started. Go ahead and move your tail section to the edge of the table. You're going to notice a small tick mark on this side and a small tick mark on this side. I'm going to line that up with the edge of the table and rather than drawing it down like we have been doing, I just want to press down like we're folding it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on the tabletop and I'm going to gently fold it over. I want to avoid any puckering on any of these surfaces. So if you feel like the foam is about to give, back off on pressure. What we're going to do is we're going to push it closed, open it, push a little harder, open it, push it down, open it, And do that several times. The more you do this, you'll feel that the foam is kind of breaking down and it's going to become easier and easier to fold. So now you can see we've got a really nice peak right there. So now let's go ahead and work on this edge. And if you remember, whenever we were looking at our former, you can see that it a, requires a pretty good bend. So we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time forming that foam. So what I'm going to do is I've got about, you know, it's about an inch. And over here on the other side, I've probably got about three inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by applying a little bit of pressure and I'm going to draw this. And I'm really bending this with my fingertips. 
as I draw it downward. You can see how I'm pushing down with my fingers as I'm drawing that over the edge. I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm coming in about three inches and on the trailing edge side about an inch. I'm going to make just the slightest bend and I'm going to start drawing. Now that we've worked that area, you can see we need to work the area right here between my finger and thumb. Okay, look at this side now. Getting out here. You can see I'm going over the entire surface now. I don't have a lot of pressure on it, but I'm wanting to make sure that I don't have any long fold lines right through here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and break this edge over just a little bit more. I'm not putting enough pressure on this where I'm going to end up with a crease, but I am putting quite a bit of pressure to where it's starting to break down the foam. So you can see on this edge how it's starting to hold its shape. This side needs a little bit of work, so we'll flip it around and do this side as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to push these edges together and while they'll still spring open I believe we've worked the foam enough that with tape this thing will go together just fine. So let's go ahead and start by tearing off about 10 pieces of tape about 5 inches long. Now when I press these two edges together, I believe I could glue about half of this, starting with the wider end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on and I'm going to fold it backwards. Okay, that ought to get it. I'm going to go ahead and apply a heavy bead of glue. I'm going to squeeze the two sides together. Now anywhere that I can see that the seam is good, I'm going to push that tape across. seam looks good, so I'm going to pull that tape across. That looks good. And that looks good. While that's cooling down, I'm going to go ahead and apply a few more pieces of tape, and I'm going to fold it back where it's away from the seam. I'm 
going to go ahead and push the two halves together. I think I can run glue to about here. Got excess glue coming out. Just have a piece of scrap on standby. Made a little bit of a mess there. You can see I'm pressing down right on the seam. good. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the remainder of the edge. Glue is going to want to squirt out of that, so be careful not to get your finger in the glue. So once you've done this, you have completed the hardest part of the entire build. Now let's go ahead and add the reinforcement and the formers. Go ahead and grab the former. It's F4 on one side, F5 on the other. And go ahead and grab this piece and we're going to slide the two together. You'll notice that the edge that we've beveled is facing upward to match this peak. You'll see that the top is flush right here, and that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and apply a bead of glue here, 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 and here. Allow that a minute and a half to cool, and we'll go ahead and do a test fit. Once it's cooled down, let's go ahead and slide the entire assembly into the tail section. I want to make sure that this seam on the bottom of the tail section lines up exactly with the tick marks at the bottom of the former. I'm going to shove the former all the way in to where this top part is flush. I'm going to roll it around and make sure there's only one layer of foam coming out at the bottom. See it needs to be pushed in just a little more. But that looks good. And here at the back, you'll notice that this is drooping down. Once we apply glue, we're going to be keeping upward pressure right here. So you can see where I'm pinching this together. We're going to be applying glue to this entire reinforcement. So we're going to have a really, really strong spine. With the test fit complete, we're going to switch gears for just a minute and make the push rod housings. The push rod housings are going to be made from coffee stirs. The actual size of the coffee stir may vary from kit to kit. The important thing is that you have one push rod housing that will be approximately 19 inches in length and a second one that's approximately 16 inches in length. So if you have a shorter coffee stirrer supplied with your kit, you might need to add a fourth. What I'm going to do first is take my 23 inch push rod and I'm going to go ahead and slide a coffee stirrer over it. And I'll go ahead and put a second one on, and a third. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to double check here. This first one I'm going to make is going to be 19 inches long. Okay, so I've got three sections. So that'll be just fine. Again, you may need a fourth if the coffee stirrer is supplied with your kit or shorter. So what I'm going to do first is take a piece of clear tape, lay it on the table sticky side up, and where the two coffee stirrers come together, I'm going to roll the tape around where the two stirrers come together. All right, now I'll do the same where the other two come together. Okay, now let's go ahead and make a second one. All right, once that's together, we're gonna to go ahead and run the push rod housings through the tail section. Normally this would be really easy because we would feed it through the former and it would come out back here. But because the distance is pretty long, we're gonna have issues with flex. So what I'm gonna do is we're, we'll feed this through and I'm gonna tape the push rod housing to the inside of the skin. In order to do that, we need to first remove this former. Once that's been done, we'll feed the push rod housing through the hole in the rear. I've got a section of control rod, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch the end of the housing Once I catch the end, I'm going to feed the push rod into the push rod housing just a little bit, and that'll help me guide it through the hole. Once I'm just through the hole, I'm going to apply a bit of glue right there. We'll let that cool down for about 45 seconds, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just like before. Feed your push rod housing through and catch the end with the push rod. You can see I've got the push rod housing just barely poking through. I'll add a bit of glue. I'll have to cool about 45 seconds like we did on the other side. Now that that's cooled, we're going to tape the push rod housings to the inside of the skin. This is a little bit difficult to show, so I want to take time and explain what I'm doing before I tape it in place. I'm going to be applying a piece of tape from about here to here. You'll notice that I'm doing it right in the middle. I'm not getting too close to the tail. I'm not getting too close to the opening. This will keep the push rod from getting bound up. Also, I want to make sure that these two push rod housings are not crossed. In order to get the proper position, I'm going to lay this former right beside it. I want to make sure that I've got my height pretty close. I don't want it too low. I don't want it too high. This push rod housing on either side is going to be passing through this hole and this one is going to be passing through the other. So that height looks pretty good. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to squeeze it just a little bit that way I've got a mark. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some tape.
Now that that's taped in place, let's do the same on the other side. Now that that's done, let's test fit the former and reinforcement one more time before we glue it in place. I'm going to slide this down and I'm going to pass the push rod through the hole on the former and the other push rod housing. And you'll see that I'm pushing this in. There's one layer of foam sticking out. I'm paying special attention. I want to make sure that this seam lines up exactly with this little tick mark. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and pull the two pieces apart. I'm actually only going to apply glue to this reinforcement. And I'm going to put a really heavy bead because I want to make sure that this is stuck really well all the way along the top. Flip it upside down, make sure that the seam is aligned with the tick mark. And make sure that this is flush. I'm going to spin it around. You can see that there's a space right here. I'm going to squeeze together. And I'm going to hold this in place for a full two minutes. I want to make sure that that glue has had plenty of time to cool down. This is where a lot of the strength comes from on the tail section. Once it's cooled down, I'm going to apply glue all the way around this former. Once I've done that, I'm going to take and wipe away the excess. I'm kind of shoving it down there between the former and the skin. And now I'm going to hold it in place while that cools down. Give that a minute and a half to cool before moving on to the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the slot for the horizontal stabilizer. Just take your razor blade and we're going to play connect the dots. Before we do a test fit of the horizontal stabilizer, you're going to see that we need to remove a little bit of material right here. What you're cutting off is that reinforcement. Once this is out of the way, the elevator is going to be free to move down and up. That looks good. Go ahead and grab your horizontal stabilizer. You'll notice I'm going to be pinching the top quite a bit. That's going to keep this opened up while we slide the horizontal stabilizer in place. Make sure that your elevator is free to go up and down. I'm looking at it from the top to make sure that it's clocked correctly and centered. That looks good. Now I'm going to run a bead of glue on this side and a bead of glue on this side. I'm not going to worry about putting glue underneath until later. Give it a minute or so to cool down. Now we're going to do a test fit of the vertical stabilizer. In order for the vertical stabilizer to go in correctly, 
the back of the tail section needs to be pinched slightly so that this piece on the bottom of the vertical stabilizer has clearance to go in. Once the bottom piece is started, you can run the skewer through the hole you just cleaned out. So I'm looking at the test fit to make sure that this centers up okay. And then I'm going to pinch this tight here at the back. Once I'm happy with the test fit, I'm going to rotate the vertical stabilizer off to the side and I'm going to run a bead of glue from the skewer down to this tick mark. While holding the vertical stabilizer off to the side, I'm going to put a small bead of glue right here. And I'm going to flip it over and put a small bead of glue right here. I'm going to pinch that closed. And then I'm going to make sure that the vertical stabilizer is perfectly centered. Up here at the front, I don't have to worry about it, but I want to make sure that it is right in line with that tick mark at the back. I want to make sure that the vertical stabilizer is perpendicular to the horizontal stabilizer. If it's not, I can twist one way or the other, and that'll slightly shift the position. Let that cool for a full minute and a half. Now that that's cooled down, let's go ahead and cut off the push rod housings. We want the push rod housings to be sticking out about an inch. Make sure that you have the push rod removed when doing this. Go ahead and grab the two remaining control horns. You'll notice that these do not have that little pill shaped slot. Let's go ahead and open up the slot for the control horn. Using the sharp end of my barbecue skewer, I'm going to go ahead and run it through the slot. Once that's opened up, I'm going to flip it around and do the same with the other end. Just make sure that fits. Go ahead and grab your long push rod. And let's feed the Z-bin through the hole. Go ahead and run the push rod through the push rod housing. One more quick test fit. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. Well, that's cooling down. I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to do the other control rod. Again, I'm using the sharp end of my skewer and I'm opening that up. And then I'll flip it over and do the same. Test fit looks good. Run the Z bend through the hole. Run my push rod through. Another quick test fit. That looks good. Let's go ahead and fill that with glue. And we'll glue the control horn in place. I'll let that cool down. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and put a Z-bend up here on this end of the control rod. I'm going to grab the control rod about an inch from where it comes out of the push rod housing. I'm going to take and bend straight down. I'm going to grab the wire again with the needle nose pliers and I'm going to bend straight out. Okay, that looks good. Do the same on the other side. Again, I'm grabbing about an inch from where the wire comes out of the housing. I'm going to bend it straight down. I'm going to re-grab the wire 
and bend straight out. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. Once that's done, let's go ahead and install the servos. For the rudder and the elevator, we're going to be using the Flight Test 9 gram servos. And just like we did on the ailerons, we're going to be using the single arm. I'm going to start by installing the servo arm, pointing straight out from the logo. I'll do the other one just the same. We're going to be gluing the servo directly to this piece right here. Before I glue it on, I want to make sure I rough up the surface of the servo. So I'm just taking a razor blade and scoring it. This will help the glue really stick. I'm going to run the Z-bend through the outermost hole in the arm. And what I'm looking at is I'm going to be looking at the rudder. I want to make sure that the rudder is exactly straight. I may have to push the servo one way or pull it the other. Need to push it a little bit more. And now you can see that the rudder is perfectly straight. So once I glue the servo on and as the glue is cooling, I am keeping my eye on the rudder. Once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to apply a liberal amount of glue. And glue the servo in place. Hold this in place for a full minute and a half. You definitely want to make sure that this has plenty of time to cool down. Now we'll go ahead and install the servo for the elevator. Just like we did for the rudder servo, we're going to flip it over and score it. I'm going to run the Z-bin through the outermost hole. And I'm going to slide the servo forward and backwards until the elevator is even. It's about where I want it. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of glue. Just like on the other side, give this a full minute and a half to cool down before moving to the next step. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to the pushrod housings where they come through the former. This assembly can be set off to the side. Let's go ahead and grab the battery box and the F1, F2, and F3 formers. Go ahead and grab your F2 former and your battery box. The F2 former has a small tick mark down here. That's the bottom. The battery box has a small rectangle. That's also the bottom. So when we're sliding the battery box through the former, make sure that it's correct. Okay, so we're going to do a quick test fit. And the front of this former is flush with the front of this edge. Once it's positioned, we're going to go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way around. Once that cools down, we're going to go ahead and install the first section of the fuselage. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and push this assembly 
through the section of fuselage. You'll notice that one end is slightly smaller than the other. Make sure that the small end is facing the table. Locate the crop mark at the bottom of the former. This is going to line up with the seam. I'm going to push this straight down. I may need to squeeze the sides just slightly to help this slide down. Okay, once I'm all the way flush, I'm going to make sure that this seam is lined up with the crop mark. It looks good. Now I'm going to push just slightly so that one layer of foam is sticking out. Okay, that looks good. Once I'm happy with position, I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way around the edge. Using a piece of scrap, I'm going to go ahead and wipe away all the excess. It's really important to get this excess glue removed. As it's cooling down, I'm going to make sure there aren't any gaps. You'll see there's a gap here at the top, so I'm going to put a slight amount of pressure to close that gap as the glue cools down. Give that a full minute and a half to cool before going on to the next step. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and set that assembly off to the side. Grab the former's marked F1 and the nose section. Go ahead and flip the nose down like this. And we're going to do a test fit with the former's. There's a small mark up here at the top representing center. We'll want to make sure that that's lined up to the mark on the former. Once I've got good alignment, I'm going to go ahead and push the former out just a little bit more so that one layer of foam is sticking out. Once that's done, we're going to run a bead of glue all the way around and then wipe away the excess. Using a piece of scrap, I'm going to go ahead and wipe away all the excess. As the glue is cooling down, I'm looking to make sure there aren't any large gaps. If there are, I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure. Give that a full minute and a half to cool, and then we'll do the next step. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and set that off to the side. Grab your former marked F3 from this section of the fuselage. Let's tear off a piece of tape about 12 inches long. I'll wrap it here. And I'm going to close it about like that. Then wrap the tape around. I've got, there's about four inches from here to here. Let's go ahead and test fit this former marked F3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this crop mark here at the top to the crop mark at the top of F3. What I'm going to do is we're going to add glue from here to about here. Make sure that you have the former installed on the right end. You can see this is the airfoil shape. This is the leading edge. We're installing the F3 former towards the leading edge of this section. I'm only going to add glue to two of the three pieces of foam. I want one piece of foam sticking out once this is glued in place.
I'm going to keep pressuring this for a full minute or so. I want to make sure everything stays together. I'm having to put a little bit of pressure here on top because it seems to be wanting to pop up right in the middle. Hold that in place for a minute or so. Again, make sure there's one layer of foam sticking out. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and glue the other side. Be sure and leave plenty of time for this side to cool as well. Let's go ahead and start putting these assemblies together. I'm going to slide former F3 over the battery box. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want this F3 former that's sticking out to slide up inside this section of the fuselage. And it may take a little bit of work to get it to fit the first time. Our test fit looks good. You'll notice that I'm lining up this crop mark here at the top. Before we glue it, let's go ahead and tear off probably about six pieces of tape, about five to six inches long. Okay, I'm going to slide this back just a little bit, and I'm going to apply glue all along this F3 former that's sticking out. I'll go ahead and slide that back in. I want to get a piece of tape here at the top, so what I'm going to do is press down with my thumb until that seam looks good, and I'm going to add a piece of tape. It's going to be my starting point. And now I'm going to work my way around. Now you can see that this is higher, so I'm going to slide this piece, I'm going to push it together, kind of slide it up. So that looks better right in there. Once I'm happy, I'll put a piece of tape. I'm going to work my way around towards the bottom of the aircraft. Got a little bit of excess glue right here, see if I can wipe that away. And I'm going to put a piece of tape here. Wipe away a little excess glue down here. Let that cool down. It fit looks really good. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the tail section. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure you notice that there's a tick mark right here and there's also a tick mark right here at the top. I'm going to extend that tick mark just a little bit. I want to make sure that when I put these two sections together I want to make sure that it's clocked correctly. So I want to make sure that this tick mark is very visible. So I'm going to do a test fit. First I'm going to do is go ahead and slide these two sections together. I want to make sure that my crop mark is visible on both parts. Okay, my alignment looks good. And my gap looks good all the way down. And looks good on the other side as well. So what I'm going to do before we glue it is I'm going to go ahead and tear off six pieces of tape, about five to six inches long. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply glue from about here all the way around this former sticking out down to about here. I'm going to apply quite a bit of glue, that way I have plenty of time to work on this.
check and make sure that my crop mark is lined up properly. And it is. I'm going to squeeze the two halves together anywhere where the seam looks good. I'm going to apply some tape. And do the same on the other side. And the tape will hold things in place while things cool down. Once it's cooled down, I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece of tape With the tape out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece to the battery box. And take and push it off to one side. Drop some glue down. And then center this. I'll hold that in place while the glue cools. It'll take about a minute and a half to dry. Before installing the nose, add Velcro to the bottom of the battery box as indicated by the arrow. Now let's go ahead and install the nose. We're going to do a test fit. There's no way that that's going to go unless we add a bevel to this piece of foam sticking out. I'm going to cut a bevel up here at the top. I'm also going to cut a bevel here at the bottom. With the bevel cut, that'll now just slide over. This piece is going to be a little bit tricky to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by gluing the top of it first. I'm going to go ahead and get some tape ready. And I'm going to apply some glue to the top here. There's a crop mark here at the top that I'm making sure is lined up just right. I'm going to let that cool for a minute or so before we do the rest of it. Once the glue's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and glue a little bit more. I'm going to squeeze down and push these two pieces together. It looks like everything's coming together really well. I think I can go ahead and glue everything else. I'm going to go ahead and tear off a bunch of tape. Probably about five pieces. I'm going to do my best to shoot glue right inside that crack. I'm going to push it together, and if I see glue coming out, I'm going to go ahead and wipe away the excess. This is definitely one of the more difficult seams to do on the fuselage. Got a little bit of a bubble here, so I'm going to push this down. Check this side. Looks like I also have a bubble over here. I'm going to press that down. Okay, that tape will hold everything in place while everything cools. Let's go ahead and start working on the power pod. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the power pod. You can see here that I've got the power pod itself. I've got the firewall. For this build, we're going to be using the Flight Test 35 Amp ESC along with Flight Test 2218 
This is part of the CPAC version 2. Once we get the firewall installed, we're going to go ahead and mount the motor and the ESC. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and hook it up to a spectrum and then we'll go ahead and bind it up to a receiver. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the firewall to the power pod. You'll notice that there is a square at the bottom right. I'm going to run a bead of glue around here and go ahead and glue the firewall in place. I'm going to push my power pod flush to the table. You'll see my firewall is sticking up just above. Let that cool down for about 45 seconds. We're going to go ahead and add a piece of tape. I'm going to tear off a piece of tape about 6 inches long. I'm going to apply it to the face of the firewall and wrap it around. And then we'll go ahead and cut off the excess. Adding tape is very important. If you are only relying on the bead of glue between the firewall and the power pod, there's a real good chance that at some point your firewall is going to break loose. Adding a piece of tape around the firewall is the best way to ensure that your firewall doesn't break loose. Once you've got everything taped up, go ahead and take a razor blade and open up this center hole. And also open up this square. There are four small holes, one at the top, one at the bottom, one on the left and one on the right. Go ahead and puncture each of those holes using the tip of a razor blade. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and mount the motor to the firewall. You'll notice that the wires are coming out the bottom right side of the motor. We're going to go ahead and feed the wires through this square. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure the motor to the firewall using the wood screws. I'm only going to run the screws about halfway down. Once all four screws are started, go ahead and tighten them all the way down. Now that the motor's all tightened down, go ahead and connect the three wires from your motor to the three wires on your ESC. It doesn't matter which order you connect them in. Once that's done, I'm going to pull the wires out of the way and we're going to be gluing a popsicle stick in place. I'm going to have the popsicle shoved all the way up against the firewall like this. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and bind the receiver to the transmitter. Now we're going to go ahead and bind the receiver to the transmitter. For this, we're using the Spectrum AR620. We're going to be using the Spectrum DX80. Let's go ahead and get started. First, let's power up the transmitter. We want to create a new model. I'm going to do that by hitting the clear and the back button at the same time. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says add new model and I'm going to hit select. I'm going to roll it over to create and hit select again. We have now created a new model. The default model aircraft has ailerons, elevators, and rudders, which is exactly what we need. So from this screen, we're just going to scroll down to the bind setting.
once you come to bind, go ahead and hit select. I'm going to scroll over to where bind is highlighted. And you'll see that we need to put the receiver into bind mode. In order to put the receiver into bind mode, I'm first going to connect the battery to the ESC. On the Spectrum AR620, there's a bind button right here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and press that in. I'm going to run my ESC wire to number one. I want to make sure that my yellow wire is up. You'll notice that I've got an orange light blinking. I'm going to keep the button pressed in and I'm going to go ahead and hit the select button on the transmitter. I need to move the receiver about three feet away. I've got my chime. We are now bound. Now before we move on to the next step, we want to test throttle and make sure the motor is spinning in the correct direction. You'll notice that I do not have my prop installed. It's very important. We don't want anybody getting hurt. Alright, you can see that the motor is turning counterclockwise as we're looking at it. In the event that the motor was turning the opposite direction, it's really easy to change. You just pick any two of the wires running from the motor to the ESC and you just switch two of them. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and install the power pod into the airframe. Let's go ahead and test fit the power pod into the airframe. I'm going to turn the airplane upside down. And I'm going to slide the power pod in like this. Now the power pod is only going to go so far. You're going to notice that the power pod will eventually hit a stop right there. This is the recommended position. If you're using a different motor, you may want to slide your power pod out a little bit more, or if you need to slide it in a little bit more, you may have to take a small sliver of foam off the back of the power pod. Our test fit looks good. Let's go ahead and pull it out and we'll apply some glue. We're going to apply a small amount of glue here and here. We're also going to apply a small amount of glue here at the back, right in front of the stop. Let's go ahead and slide the power pod in. I'm going to make sure that the power pod is pushed all the way down in the back. And I'm going to take the motor and I'm going to push it down. This will give a slight down thrust angle. Once that's done, we're going to put a small amount of glue right here along the bottom of the firewall where it meets that last F1 former. It's going to be a little bit hard to show that on camera, so I want to show it from this angle before I actually apply glue. You can see where I've got a good line of glue in there. That'll be plenty to hold things in place. Once this is done, we're going to go ahead and add the final piece of the nose. Go ahead and remove this piece from your kit. We're going to tear paper off of one side. It's a symmetrical part, so it doesn't matter which side you tear. Let's go ahead and form this piece up. Just like other parts, we're going to put this on the edge of a table and draw it downward. You'll notice, again, just like other parts, we want to make sure that as the piece is being drawn down, that this angle stays at 90 degrees. You want to take your time on this part to avoid crinkles. 
once you go over it about three times or so, let's test things. That looks like that's going to go together just fine. I'm going to tear off a small sliver of tape and then we'll glue things together. We'll let that cool down and then we'll go ahead and glue it to the airframe. I'm going to leave the tape in place whenever I glue these two pieces together. But I am going to cut off the excess tape before I do that. Let's start out with a test fit. You're going to notice that it won't even come close to going on. We're going to have to add a real heavy bevel all the way around this edge. Now that I've got a bevel, i try test fitting this again. You'll notice that there's a small crop mark right here at the top. We'll want to line that up and work this around. I'm not going to be able to get a perfect test fit, but I know that since I cut such a heavy bevel, I know it's going to go on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply glue from about here all the way across the top to about here on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and tear off some tape. This will help keep everything in place. That looks really good. I'll go ahead and put a piece of tape in place. I'm going to go ahead and let that cool down for about 45 seconds before I move around. Now that the top has had time to cool down, I flip the aircraft over and I'm going to glue from about here to the center right here. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these two pieces together and you're going to notice I've got a little excess foam right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor blade and holding it vertically, I'm just going to remove a little sliver of foam. When looking at it from the front, I only remove foam from about here to here. With that foam gone, it should close up a little bit better. Yeah, that looks a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and squirt glue from about here to here. I've already got some tape staged. Looks like i got some excess glue, so I'm going to wipe that away. As that's cooling down, we can go ahead and roll it over and close up the remainder. All right, the nose is done. Let's go ahead and install the wing. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the main wing. I'm gonna flip the airframe upside down Make sure the wires are moved out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and tuck these wires in the wing like this. Right, now we're going to go ahead and do a test fit. We'll flip the wings upside down. I'm going to slide them all the way back. You're going to see a squared notch. And you can see when I 
push the wing backwards, that gap will close up. I need to line up the seam on the wing to the seam here on the tail section. Once that's lined up, I'm going to check up here at the front. And what I want to make sure is this U-shaped knockout is centered left and right. Our test fit looks good, so I'm going to move the wing back just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and apply glue all the way along this edge, back here, and along this edge. I'm going to go ahead and apply a very heavy bead of glue. I want to make sure I have plenty of time to get the wing into position. And once it's in position, I want to make sure there's plenty of glue to keep it stuck in place. I'm going to check to make sure I've got all the tape out of the way. Go ahead and apply glue. Line up the back of the wing first, then drop the front of the wing in place. And keep pressure with my thumb here in the back. And you can see how I'm pushing down in the front as well. Hold this for a full two minutes. The glue needs plenty of time to cool down. Now that that's had time to cool down, I'm going to inspect both sides to make sure everything is good and stuck. This side looks really good. And looking at this side, looks like I've got a gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way along this side. And while that cools down, I'll keep a little pressure on it. I got a little bit of excess glue, so I'm going to wipe it away with some scrap. Let that cool for about two minutes. Even though this side looks good, I am going to go ahead and run a thin bead of glue right along this seam. Looks like my tape got right in the way. There we go. Well, that's cooling down. Go ahead and set your aircraft off to the side and let's go ahead and begin construction on the canopy. Go ahead and remove the following parts from your kit. These four pieces make up the canopy. Let's start by tearing paper off of one side. Each part is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which side you tear off. Okay, let's start with the small pieces. We're just going to add a little bit of shape to them by running them over the edge of a table. As you can see there, we've got a little bit of shape. We don't need a whole lot. Do the same on the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test fit these two pieces together. Now you're going to see that there's a pretty good gap there at the top. So before we glue them together, I'm going to add just a small bevel on one of the pieces, and it really doesn't matter which one. Once you add a bevel, you'll see that there's no longer a gap there where the paper meets. Go ahead and add a bead of glue to one side or the other. And let's stick the two pieces together. Hold those together for about a minute, and then we'll start working on the other parts. All right, go ahead and take this part, and we're just going to add a little bit of shape between my fingers here. The sides stay pretty well flat. Okay, that should be enough. Now, in this particular piece, we're not actually going to do forming the way we did on these other parts. Instead, what we're going to do 
is we're going to place this on the edge of the table. You can see I've got a point here and a point here. There's a little tiny center mark right here and I'm going to go in approximately a half of an inch. It isn't really critical so I didn't put an actual crop mark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a slight bend. And then I'm going to go over to this other point and I'm going to come in about a half inch from this center mark and I'm going to bend it. And so you can see how I've kind of got a flat area now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two pieces together. All right, and it's lined up here at the bottom. Add glue along here. I'm going to stick this together. Let that cool for a minute and a half. As it cools, you can add a piece of tape and that will help keep things held in place. Before we do the next step, I'm going to go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. And I'm going to bend things around. I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up here at the bottom. Make sure those two edges go together. I'm going to add a bead of glue right here. And I'll go ahead and stick things together like I did on the other side. The tape will keep everything in place as the glue continues to cool. Let's go ahead and grab these two pieces we glued together earlier. Let's start out with a test fit. Now you can see what I'm doing here is I'm pushing slightly out. Instead of this being flat across, it's going to make it slightly curved here at the top. So you can see that there's a little bit of foam exposed. So I'm going to bend this and curve it just a little bit more. Right. Now you can see that that seam looks pretty good. And you can see how it's sticking up a little bit right there. I'm going to press that down and close that seam in. So you're going to be kind of forming the foam with your fingertips. You mess with it enough, everything will line up just like it needs to. Once you're happy with your fit, I'm going to go ahead and glue two sides. I'm going to glue this, and then I'm going to glue this side. The glue is starting to cool down, so I'm pinching the seam between my finger and thumb, and that helps smooth things out. I'm going to flip the canopy over. I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the inside along this edge and this edge here at the back. Let that cool down for a minute or so. Then we're going to go ahead and cover everything with a couple layers of tape. Once everything's been covered with tape, you can take a hobby iron and you can take and you can smooth everything out. Now my hobby iron isn't on, but I want to show another method that works well also. If you're using a hobby iron, make sure you have masking tape in place. This will make sure that the surface stays nice and clean. If you don't have a hobby iron, still go ahead and apply tape the way I've done. But you can take this on the tabletop, and you can just apply pressure right along the seams. You can see that I'm going to roll it back 
and forth. Now we can go ahead and peel the tape off. Be careful when peeling the tape off that you don't remove the paper underneath with it. With all the tape removed, you can see that we've got a nice smooth finish there in our canopy. Now let's go ahead and test fit this to the aircraft. Before we do the test fit, let me go ahead and remove the tape from this area where the canopy will be installed. All right, the canopy will be centered right here on top of the fuselage. You're going to notice I've got a pretty big step right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bevel all the way along this side and the other side. We're going to add a small bevel here at the front. You can see I'm cutting a pretty shallow bevel here on the sides. Do the same on this side. And here in the front, I'm going to come straight in. Just take off that peak. Now I'm going to test fit this again. And you can see that that step is almost gone. I'm also going to remove a small amount of material from the back side of this. So when the canopy overlaps this tail section just slightly, it isn't too big of a step. Okay, that looks good. I am making sure that the crop mark on the canopy does line up to the center line on the tail section. Now that I'm happy with the test fit, I'm going to go ahead and apply a bead of glue all the way around the edge of the canopy. Check alignment on my crop mark here at the back and drop the canopy straight down. Okay, I'm applying pressure to the sides to make sure I don't have any gaps. And apply some pressure here to the front. Hold this in place for a full minute and we'll go on to the next step. Now that the canopy is in place, I want to go ahead and finish gluing the horizontal stabilizer in place. Now that we've installed the main wing, we're going to look at the horizontal stabilizer from the back and see if it needs a little bit of adjustment this way or this way. So I'm going to swing the aircraft around and I'm going to look straight down and see if it needs adjustment one way or the other. That looks good, but in the event that you need to make a small adjustment, you'll remember that we've glued along the tops, but we have not glued here along the bottom. If you discover that the horizontal stabilizer needs some adjustment, it's no big deal. We're just going to take and cut a small sliver of foam on the underside of the horizontal stabilizer on one side or the other. We will apply a bead of glue and just apply a small amount of pressure to one side or the other as the glue cools down. Since everything looks good, I'm going to go ahead and flip the aircraft over. I'm going to apply glue to both sides. While that's cooling down, let's flip the aircraft around and let's go ahead and attach all the servos to the receiver. So my ESC goes to channel number one. Notice I've got my yellow wire up. My ailerons go to channel number two. I'm 
my elevator goes to channel number three, and my rudder goes to channel number four. Before we finish out the remaining details on the airplane, let's go ahead and get the electronics hooked up and everything programmed. Now we're going to check our servos. You can see that I've already connected my battery. What I want to do is I want to make sure that the controls are responding to the input from the transmitter. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test my ailerons. When I move the stick right, I want my aileron on the right to go up. Okay, that looks good. Now let's test our elevator. I'm going to pull the right stick back and my elevator needs to go up. Okay, you can see that that is backwards. We're going to have to go in there and change that. Let's go ahead and check our rudder as well. When I move my rudder stick to the left, my rudder should go to the left. You can see that that is also reversed. This is really easy to change on the spectrum, so let's go in and do it. Let's go ahead and go in and reverse the two servos. Start by hitting the select button. Scroll down to servo setup. And hit select. Scroll over to travel. Hit select. We're going to scroll over until it says reverse. Once reverse comes up, hit the select button. Now let's scroll over to where it says elevator. And I'm going to hit the select button and you can see that that switches the elevator. Let's also go over to the rudder. We're going to hit select again. And now that's been reversed as well. Let's go ahead and back out. And let's go ahead and check to make sure that the changes went ahead and took. I'm going to pull the stick back on the right and our elevator should go up. Okay, that looks good. Looks like we've got good movement up and down. Now let's check to make sure that our rudder is correct. When I move the rudder stick to the left, the rudder ought to go to the left. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm noticing that my rudder needs to be centered. It's too far to the left. So we're going to go into the sub trim and we're going to make a slight adjustment on the rudder. To adjust the sub trim, hit your select button. Scroll down to servo setup and hit select. Scroll over to travel, hit select. Now we're going to scroll to sub trim. Once sub trim comes up, go ahead and hit select. Now we're going to scroll over to rudder. I'm going to select rudder. And now I can scroll and center up my rudder. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to hit back. Any other controls that need adjustment, you can repeat the same process in the sub trim menu. Now that we've got all the programming done, we just have a few more steps and this plane is ready to fly. Now we're going to go ahead and install the fairings. This is probably my favorite step in the entire build. What makes this step unique is that this piece requires a reverse curve be formed. We have to make this part look good. This is what gives the Spitfire its iconic smooth lines. So let's start by flipping the aircraft upside down. Let's go ahead and remove all the tape here on the tail section. Remember to be careful when tearing tape across seams. Once the tape's been removed, you can set the airplane off to the side. What we're going to do is we're going to start by tearing off one side. Do this on both pieces. Now in order to get this reverse curve that we're looking for, the first step is going to be to add a very shallow bevel along this edge and all the way along this edge. The best way I've found to cut a shallow bevel on this part is to turn the part over with the foam down. And I'm going to lay my razor blade almost flat. 
you can see that I'm going to be drawing my razor blade this direction. You can see that I've also got it rotated towards me at about a 45 degree angle. Okay, didn't quite cut all the way through, so I'll do it again. Okay, you can see that there's a nice wide bevel all the way down that edge. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do it right here on this edge. Let's do the same on the other part. Once the bevel's cut, we're going to go ahead and begin forming the reverse curve. What I have found to work very well is a can of spray paint. I'll lay a can of spray paint over on its side. And I'll put just the edge of this bevel right down the middle of the can. I found that a small wrench works really well. I've also used something like a Sharpie Magic Marker. That works really well for this step as well. So what I do is I take the wrench and I run it down the very edge of the fairing. And each time I run it down, I increase the pressure just slightly. I'm not pressing hard enough that the foam will tear, but I am applying a moderate amount of pressure. And you'll notice that I am staying on the very, very edge. You'll want to do this 10 or 12 times. After you run over it 10 or 12 times, go ahead and move the wrench in just a little bit. Maybe 3 16 of an inch to a quarter of an inch. It's really important on this step to take very, very small steps as you're doing this step. If you jump from the edge to the center, you're going to have a huge crease right down the middle of the part. You can start to see that I'm getting just a little bit of a curve, but it's nothing like what we need. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on this edge just a little bit. Again, I'm staying very close to the edge. Only after I go over it 10 or 12 times do I start moving it towards the center. Okay, I'll work this in now. Really take your time on this step. If you take your time, the part is going to come out really clean and smooth. Okay, now you can see that this is starting to turn up here and here. We're still looking really flat right here in the middle, and that's okay. Let's go ahead and flip the part back over. Now I'm going to start moving towards center a little bit more. Now I'm starting to go over the center, and I don't have near as much pressure as I do out on the edges. You can start to see I'm getting a good curve there now. So I'm going to flip it back over, and we're going to apply more pressure down the middle. Okay, now we've got the shape we're looking for. We'll set this piece off to the side and we'll go ahead and do the other one. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and glue them in place. 
Now we're going to go ahead and do a test fit. I want to point out that here in the back there is a very small crop mark on the tail section. With the fairing in position, that is going to just make contact with that crop mark. So once I've got it in the position that I'm happy with, I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to draw a score along the top. I'm also going to do one here on the wing. Okay, I'm going to pull that back and I just want to make sure that that score I made is visible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue just on the inside of that score line. That way when I install the part, it's going to push all the excess glue towards the center. If I apply glue to the fairing itself and I slide it in place, we're going to have a mess of glue showing. It won't hurt flight performance if you do it that way, it just won't look quite as good. Apply a bead of glue to the inside of that line. Do the same thing on the top. And you can see when that goes on, there's no glue visible. Everything is tied together really nicely. Keep a little pressure on that for about 45 seconds. And anywhere you still have gaps, like here in the back, we'll go back and glue this here in just a minute. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip the aircraft over and I'll add a little glue from the bottom side. Once that cools down, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, let's go ahead and test fit the fairing like we did on the other side. I'm making sure that the back is lined up with that crop mark. I'm also making sure that this is flush with the back of the wing here. And once I'm happy with position, I'll go ahead and scribe a line. Apply a bead of glue just inside the line. Keep a little pressure on that for about 45 seconds. And anywhere you still have gaps, like here in the back, we'll go back and glue this here in just a minute. Hold that in place till it cools down. 30 seconds or so ought to get it. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and fill in this area and this area. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and grab these two parts from your kit. We're going to go ahead and fill in these open spaces here behind the wing. This piece will fit in about like this. All right, in order to get it to fit, we're going to have to cut a bevel all the way along this edge and this edge. Once that bevel's cut, this will fit in a little better. Looks 
like my bevel needs to be adjusted a little bit right here, but everything fits up nicely right here. You can see as I push this part down, it's kind of opening this up just a little more. That's what we want. Okay, that looks really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue here on this bevel and here on this bevel. Hold this in place for a full minute while the glue cools down. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and add the radiator. Go ahead and remove the following pieces from your kit. We're going to go ahead and build the radiator. First thing to do is using your dull razor blade, go ahead and run that down the score on each of these skinny parts. And we'll tear off the edge here. Let's go ahead and peel off the paper as well. What we're going to do, we're going to add just a little bit of shape to each of these pieces. Okay, you can see how it's slightly curved? We want that to match up right here. Let's go ahead and do that on the other part as well. Once that's done, let's go ahead and test fit this and apply a bead of glue. I'm going to stop about a quarter inch from the end. Okay, let's do the same on this side. Now you can see I've still got paper sticking up on either side, so I'm going to make a little cut right there at the back of this flat piece. I'll put a little drop of glue on the foam. Do that on both sides, and then we'll just fold the paper over. Your kit will come with two radiators. It's up to you whether you want to put one on or two on just depends on the model you're trying to go for. On this model we're just going to put a single and we're going to put this on the underside of the right wing. So if you look closely on the wing you're going to see a couple small crop marks. There's also some present on the left wing. But we're just going to line up the front and the back with each of these marks. So that's where we're going to want to mount the radiator. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue all along the edge. Line up the marks front and back and hold that in place for about 30 seconds. Go ahead and grab the following parts out of your kit. You're going to need a couple barbecue skewers, four wooden washers, a rubber band, and these foam components. Let's start by gluing these two together. You're going to notice on your accessory panel there are some small tick marks. You'll see that you can center these two pieces right inside those tick marks. Let's go ahead and glue that in place. Once that's done, we're going to glue this piece just barely overlapping the edge. 
you can see that it's sticking out about the thickness of a piece of foam. Okay, now go ahead and take your barbecue skewer. And we're going to be running a barbecue skewer through this top piece of foam. I'm going to mark about a half inch from my thumbnail where the barbecue skewer comes out of the foam. Pull that out. Now I'm going to cut the skewer. Go ahead and put some glue on the end I cut off. I'm going to slide one of these wooden washers over the skewer. Add a little bit more glue. Go ahead and add a second one. Be careful you don't get burned here. And then I'll add a little glue here on top. Now let's go ahead and make a second one. We'll do everything the same length as the first. I'm going to go ahead and run some glue all the way down this skewer. And we're going to push this in. I want to make sure that there's a small gap between these wooden washers and this block of foam. Now go ahead and take your other skewer. I'm going to wrap our rubber band around it and put a little bit of glue on the rubber band. Kind of hold it in place just a little. I'm going to pull all the wires out that I can. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show, but if you remember, whenever we pushed the power pot in, it stopped against these three pieces of foam inside the battery box. What we're going to do is we're going to take this skewer and we're going to shove it straight into those three pieces of foam. We're going to push it all the way in. I want to make sure that that rubber band cannot come off. So if you look inside, you can see that I've pushed the skewer all the way in. This will capture the rubber band and keep it from falling off. Go ahead and pull it out and apply glue to the skewer and then push it back in. Well, that's cooling down. Let's rotate the aircraft over and let's go ahead and remove all of the tape. I've got all the tape removed. I'm going to go ahead and fit the accessory cover. You can see that this little step here in the back will go down like this and the accessory cover will close like this. It might be necessary to bend the corners just a little bit. Our fit looks pretty good. Might tear away some paper here. I'm going to form these edges just a little bit so it matches up a little better. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I'm going to do is reach down and grab this rubber band. I'm going to hook it around this skewer here. And this can just be pulled out of the way when you're installing a battery. If 
and the pressure from the rubber band will hold that in place. And the only thing we have left is adding the exhaust and putting the prop on. You're going to see here on the nose, you've got a little crop mark here and a little crop mark here. The exhaust is going to be centered between those two. You can see that I had to add a little bend in order to get it to fit. Do a quick test fit. I'm going to apply glue all along this edge. Give that about 30 seconds to cool down, and then we'll do the other side just the same. Once this cools down, there's one detail on the vertical stabilizer I almost always forget. Let's do that and then we'll install the prop. Go ahead and remove this piece from your kit. This will go right along the leading edge of the rudder. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of trimming, make it look a little better. Here's a quick test fit. I'm going to go ahead and apply glue here and here. Now if you want a little bit cleaner look, we can just take a piece of scrap and cut a small sliver of paper off. Feel that. And we can glue that right across the exposed foam. There you go, that'll clean it up nicely. And you're welcome to do that in any other area where there's foam exposed. You can do it here on the leading edge or here on top of the tail. Your kit will have plenty of scrap where you can cut all the little slivers you need. Now let's go ahead and install the propeller. Okay, let's go ahead and install our prop. Double check that you are running a counterclockwise prop. Let's go ahead and install it. Once your prop's installed, your aircraft is ready to fly.